This video is going to take you through the on-screen keyboard in Autograph, but uh, maybe first of all we need to decide how you're going to get it to show on the screen at all. Uh, usually when Autograph first installs that isn't on and the pages open up a bit like this and there's no keyboard in sight. So uh, let me just introduce you to this button up here which is the whiteboard mode and one of the properties of the whiteboard mode apart from making it all much clearer to see at the back of the classroom is that it does give you the on-screen keyboard as well. Um, if for any reason you've closed it down uh, you can always go view keyboard and of course that's the way to get it up even if you're not in whiteboard mode. Okay so how does it work? Well first of all it's got this central bit here and then it has a data bit on the right hand side and it has a main keyboard here. This extra doesn't show all the time. That's up to you to get these extra buttons here. So it's a standard keyboard here, but on top we have a lot of mathematical symbols. Let's look at the central bit first. And certainly when you're using this in the classroom, it's always a good idea to minimize it back like this and maybe park it over here so it's not in the way of what's being drawn. So we've got arrow keys. Now, how do they work? Well, let's have a look at putting a point on, say, here. And the arrow keys will move it around and anything else that may be attached to it. So let's just see uh, what it's doing. And we'll put on a text box now which says point. I think I'll just take away, take away O I N T. So it's at 1, 2, which is 1 long, 2 up. If I do this up here, it's going to go up in tenths. If I press the control, it goes in hundredths. I press shift as well, it goes in thousands. So you've got uh, nice fine control over that. If you just press shift on its own, it goes in whole numbers. Now in the standard level, um, everything works uh, in, in the, about one tenth. So uh, just to show you how that works, if you go to view, preferences, general is the way you can switch levels, standard level. And you have these two controls over here. This is uh, grid setting one, and this is grid setting point one. So with the point with one setting, it's going to leap in whole number increments, and then control will do it in tenths, and shift will do it in hundredths. If you do it in point one, it's like it is in the advanced level, so it's going in um, tenths straight away. This is all controlled, by the way, in axes, snap settings, where you can actually set the snap to be whatever you like. Okay, what else we've got here? We've got Control and Shift. You notice that Control and Shift stay down until they're released. Unlike the Shift and Control here, if you do Control S because you want to save, um, it's gone as soon as you've uh, pressed the letter S. Obviously, delete will delete anything that you're uh, dealing with at the time being. Um, this is Undo, which will put it all back again, which is very nice. Um, shift Undo redoes it. So in fact, um, if I was to, for example, right click, let's put a circle radius 1, and let's have a horizontal line, let's have a vertical line. So we've got lots of things going on here. And if I undo, that'll just undo them back in the sequence that I put them on. And then shift undo, we'll put them back again. So that's very nice. Uh, page up and page down uh, won't do a great deal in this mode, but in this 3D it's quite nice. If you put a point on here, a page up and page down will change the, the Z values. So left and right will change the X value. Then up and, then up and down will change the Y value. Which, uh, going back to here, print screen is used for saving the entire screen to the clipboard, which is very useful. Or um, if you're running a program like Snagit, uh, it'll open up Snagit and save whatever you want, you want to from that. Uh, delete will, of course, delete whatever's selected. In this case the point is selected so press delete and all those extra objects will disappear as well. The escape key is very useful. Uh, for example if I got some points on here and I press the escape key notice that it's going to move the selection back to select mode in the toolbar there. So I'm going to press escape now. Also if you press escape again, watch this, press escape again it will get rid of that. So it clears all selections. So two escapes is quite a good way of starting a new selection particularly if you're in the whiteboard mode where you do not need shift key to do multiple selections. So if for example I had 
these three points selected and I want to draw a line between these two, I won't get the right options. If I do right click now, I get angle all the three point things like angles and angle bisectors. Okay, so that's the middle bit. Data, now these are all the numbers, but it does give you pi, which is useful, and divided by multiply minus and plus, of which only the plus sign occurs on the standard keyboard. So it's really useful to have a proper minus sign. Now uh, this is the decimal point and the comma separator for lists. Uh, that's very important. If you change language, uh, very often for say French or German, you'd have a comma here and a semicolon here. That's the tab key, very useful, and then of course the two deletes. I'm going the other way, but all the standard keyboards here, this is this will vary according to which language you've got selected. For example, if I change this to French, uh, you've got the French keyboard now with all the numbers as superscripts, and uh, it's really quite a complicated keyboard, but the French are obviously used to it. And up here we've got the same mathematical symbols. Change it back to English. I've got sine, cos and tan usefully as single entries. I've got X, Y and Z in red, so you can see those very nicely. Extra keys are quite useful. The one or two characters here that only work in our own font, the Arial for Autograph Unicode. Uh, for example, X bar and Y bar and par minus one. They do not exist as standard Unicode characters. It might be worth pointing out that this keyboard will actually run anywhere uh, as long as you're on a PC. I'm afraid this, this particular feature doesn't work on the Mac as yet. But let's open up um, Notepad, for example, and let's put in the integral of sine squared 2 theta d theta. It's fairly simple, but uh, the point being that it's just single line mathematics, and uh, that squared is not a superscript, it's an actual character. So again, plus or minus the square root of v squared minus 4ac. Now, you notice that minus sign was, was not a proper minus sign, so it might be worth going back and having a look at that, so we'll just delete that and do a proper minus sign over here, and that's more like it. Now, that will work in any font. You can change that font to anything you like. At the moment, it's font Calibri, but if I change it to Cambria, uh, you'd find it uh, still works. But there are certain characters that won't, and as I said, it's X bar and Y bar don't, and power minus one doesn't. So if you want those to work, you've got to change the font to Arial for Autograph Unicode. Uh, which is installed when Autograph is installed anyway, so it's not a problem. Here it is. There we are. So now those characters now work. There are obviously occasions uh, when you're doing a text box in Autograph where you might need to put in special characters, and here the keyboard is extremely useful. Um, so you can put in plus or minus a square root, or you can put in things like x bar, comma, y bar, and that will turn up here in the text box. So generally, this is the way the keyboard works. If you want to change languages, uh, to get in a different language, you go to the control panel and go to region and language options. So let's change the language to French in France. Now we just need to load our autograph from scratch. It now loads up in French, standard or advanced. Now the language of the keyboard will be determined by the language now at the bottom here. Here you click the little EN down the bottom here and it offers you French for France. And the keyboard changes to French. And you'll notice that uh, along here we have a comma as the decimal point and a semicolon as the list separator. Which means for example that parametric equations need to be separated by a semicolon. So there is the on screen.